Okay, everybody, this is video number two of this series talking about the drive-in one versus one. Who knows what this thing's going to be? But if you haven't seen the introduction video, then go check that out. It'll be linked below. And this is a real playable game. Check out the map code below as well to go play it. So one versus one elimination. You get uh, 20 rounds, three eliminations per round. Whoever wins, wins. In this one, we're going to cover the HUD that shows up. So we're going to talk multiplayer. And we're going to do this all in verse without further ado. OK, so let's get right into this. We are going to be starting to write some verse stuff here. We're going to understand how to do HUD and multiplayer things. But to set this up, we've got our score manager. This is going to manage the score. Uh, this is one way to do this. This is not the only way to do this. We're going to cover other ways how to do this. But this is one of the simpler ways to do it. So we'll start simple, go difficult later. We've got our game manager and I have a link to tutorial below on how to make game managers. The other devices aren't very important at the moment because they don't do anything to manage the score or to show the HUD. So these are the two that we need to know. So with the in the game manager, if you look in the details panel, we've got some editable set up here and I'll show you that in verse in a second. But it really means that we can connect up things that live inside of this world with our verse code. So we've got our spawn pad for player one, spawn pad for player two. And as I said, this score manager also set up so that we can access it via verse. And this is this is definitely the easiest way to do this. So let's get into the verse code next. OK, so down in my verse explorer, you can see I've got custom player dot verse and game manager verse. These are going to be two very important files that we're going to go over to understand how multiplayer game management works. So let's open up game manager by double clicking it. And it's going to open up this screen here that gives me all of my verse code. Now, there's quite a bit of verse code in here. And uh, if you are a Patreon member, this is all available to you. So let's get right into it. So we've got our game manager and it is a creative device. That's why we're able to sit it on the stage. I've made a map for the players. So all of my players will go into this map that I want to keep track of my players for. And all of them are a custom player. So let's take a quick glance at the custom player file. And again, this is all available over on Patreon. This is what it looks like. It is simple. We are writing a UI and we are going to be updating it. But we need to keep track of every player in a custom way. We don't want to do it with just the basic, the players in the get players play space idea. We're going to make our own. And the way that we keep track of these players is we put them in there when they spawn in originally. Before we get too far into that, let's talk about a couple more things. We've got our team scores set up here. We're going to keep track of them here from the score manager. We've got our editables, as we already talked about, our two spawners, and then we've got our score manager. So this is on begin. On begin runs when the game starts. And so we want to say to our spawners, let us know when somebody comes in. So we'll do the spawned event, subscribe, and we're going to call on player spawn. Now I've covered different ways to do this in other tutorials. You could put a tag on them. There's only two of them. So I'm just going to do it manually like this. And then the get place place player removed event. We want to know when somebody leaves. So we're going to call on player removed when that happens. Update score is a function that's going to run when somebody gets eliminated or when somebody respawns. Sometimes the HUD doesn't update when somebody is in the middle of respawning and stuff. Kind of weird. So we're going to call it more often than once. And it's OK to call this all the time if you want to. It's really just grabbing a value and placing it on the screen. So to do that, we go through all the players in the players map. We grab their team, which we'll talk about in a second. If the team is zero, because there's only two players in this one. Uh, if the team is zero, then team score one is going to be the score manager. Get the current score of that player that we just accessed. Else, the team score for team two is the other player. Now, this is kind of a funny way to do this. I know that, but it's actually a really easy way to do it when you have two players to keep track of. If you have more then there's other ways to do this. But that's not important right now. We're then going to tell each player because we are looping through them. Update your score. We'll cover update score in just a second. Keeping track of these team scores, as we said before, because we've got them set up here as variables and then we set them here. Super simple. On player spawn is next. On player spawn, you should catch this in every game that you ever build. And essentially we're going to or we're going to grab the player object. We're then going to see if they exist inside of our player's map. And if they do, then do nothing because they already exist. If not, we're going to set them up to have their eliminated event listened to. We're then going to create our custom player object. We're going to put it in the player's map and then we're going to initialize that player with some stuff. The team collection that they are on is important. We need to know that. So we figure that out here and then we set their team number 
here. Very, very easy to do. And then update the score when they come in. So just in case the score is something different. On player removed is important to do because we have to get rid of players that are sitting in the map that aren't in the game anymore. So this is kind of a way you can just copy and paste this off of Epic's website. I didn't really think about this much, but the idea is that take an object out of a map, you actually have to make a brand new map and then put the values in that you want, then replace the whole map with your temporary map. I'm not going to bother getting into all this, but that's exactly what it does. Copy paste that. You're good. And then the last one is on player eliminated. Now on player eliminated, there's code everywhere for this. So I'm not going to cover this in great detail, but essentially we need to know if it's a self elim. We need to know who did the eliminating. And then we know, need to know who got eliminated. The person that did the eliminating gets the score manager activated for them. So we pass in their agent object and then we update score once this whole function is through. And that's the whole game manager. So it's very simple right now. We're going to be building on this a lot. So hopefully this makes sense. Okay, let's go into the custom player because we need to understand how the update score function. So inside of here, we're keeping track of the agent because we set that back in the game manager when we create our custom player here. Now, this is kind of an advanced topic, but I'll talk about this more in the very near future if it's needed. So we've got our two text blocks because that's exactly what they are on the screen. We're going to keep track of team one, and team point two points inside of here as well. We need this string to message function because it is going to set some string or text to a message object. Then we initialize the player, call initialize player when they first come in. And this creates our text blocks with one's going to be blue, one's going to be red. They have a default shadow color of black. The offset is two pixels and then the opacity of that shadow is one. So it's completely opaque. And we're going to set the message to team one colon and then whatever the team one points are. That's why they're in these curly brackets. So that's going to be zero and the same for the other one, except it's red. And then uh, we place these into the UI by grabbing the UI object of the player after we create this UI. So it's going to be a canvas. Here's our set team and get team function. Setters and getters are a very good idea to use. Our update score function takes the two scores, T1, T2, T1 and T2, obviously, and places them here inside of the text blocks set text function using the string to message because we can't just put a string in. We have to call the string to message, which creates a message object. The create user UI is simple. It creates a canvas and inside of that canvas has slots, canvas slots, Slot, and then all the things that are involved for that. So one of the slots is going to be full with the team one text block stuff. And the other one will have team two text block stuff. Again, all documented on Epic's website. I encourage you to check it out to figure out why and how we place these objects. Um, nothing special at all. It's actually relatively simple. But what we're really concentrating on is that we've got this widget with an overlay and inside of there is our widget team one text block item. And so we can update this directly with our update score. It just lives right here. So let's talk briefly of why this works. Now, a lot of people have been really struggling with how to create UI for more than one player because Epic's website is full of stuff where you would do it inside of here and you would set it up so that only one player would be able to see it. But you actually must create a UI for every player. So that's why we want to create a custom player object that we can affect after they're spawned into the game, which we do here, this new custom player. So we set them up as an object. We put those into a map. And just to kind of cover in case you don't know what a map is, a map is like an associative array, meaning that we can place stuff inside of the map with some unique key. So it doesn't have to be like an array. An array can hold a bunch of values. The index of that goes from zero to whatever the length of the array is. Maps are different. You can have an index of something. And in this case, it's going to be the player object is the index. The custom player is the value of that slot in the map. And so we would access it by getting the player and uh, the custom player lives inside of that of the map. So it's an array, but it's an associative array. It's very, very handy. Um, if this is all new to you, don't worry. This will make sense one day, the more you use it. The bottom line is that we grab the player, we place them in this thing, and then we start adding in all kinds of extra stuff to it so we can do things with them. And that's how you make a UI for multiplayer games. Uh, it shows up, timed up on everybody's screen. This is the first of many tutorials on this game. Hopefully this is going to be a very interesting path we're on. Play the game. Let me know what you think, any changes you want, requests you have. Let's build this thing into something kind of cool. That's it for this one. I will see you guys in the next one.